Oh yeah, what's up guys? This is Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I want to talk to you about a topic that is all over YouTube. And here it is. People are quitting YouTube. And they're quitting in droves. And I'm not talking about small YouTubers or medium-sized YouTubers like myself, or maybe even yourself, I don't know. But I mean, we're talking big AAA YouTubers that have been doing this for years. And they have millions and millions and millions of subscribers. And they're dropping out. They're turning their channels off. They're quitting or they're going into like a holding pattern where maybe they just upload like a basic vlog every once in a while. But they're not doing it. And they're not doing it passionately like they did before. So the the heartbeat moments that I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover two videos. One by Creek. What the heck? Call me Creek? Just yeah, that's it. Creek Craft. <laughs> and the other one's by Rick Beto. I, I don't follow Roblox, so I don't exactly know his name. But what he says is very interesting. So we're going to cover both those videos. I'm going to show you some heartbeat moments from both of them. And more importantly, you're going to, in my opinion, you're going to get a takeaway. And that's this. If you look at YouTube as a job where you have to schedule your posts and upload them at certain times and you got to have all of these things that have to be done on schedule, you could run the risk of burnout. You could run the risk of no longer enjoying it. Whereas some of people that do this because they love it and they're not stuck to schedules and timings and, and all the minutiae that comes with running a YouTube channel, and there's a lot, believe me, well, they tend to keep going. So keep that in the back of your mind. Let's go through the two videos. I'm going to start with um, the Roblox guy here, Creek Craft, and, just wait. and then we'll go from there. All right, so the first guy is Creek Craft, and great video. He's got nine point something million subscribers, but the way he starts his video is really, really good. It's got this cool uh, start. Let me show you here. You'll see here on the right side, it says moments, and it's got this nice slideshow of big YouTubers that are either stepping down or in the process of stepping down or have stepped down. Let me start with that, and then we'll go from there. I'll make it full screen because it's that good. Let me just wait here for a little bit. Tom Scott, Meat Canyon, mm. that Dan TDM, Captain Sparkles, Stampy, <laughs> just PewDiePie. I mean, the holy smokes! Really feels like all of my favorite YouTubers, all of the OGs, the originals. There. So there he says it. Some of the original guys that you grew up with, you may have grown up watching their videos, like Minecrafters, Robloxers, Let's Players, whatever it is. A lot of them are quitting, and here we go. Let's take a look at why. I'm going to go switch forward to about a minute 29 of this video. Big YouTubers Listen. retiring. Captain Sparkles, the Minecraft YouTuber I grew Okay, so he covers some of the names that I do, but here it is. Here at 318, this is the first big moment where it actually makes sense as to why some of these people are quitting. Watching them in high school, they were teenagers, you know? They were like early 20s. Yep. And now they're dads. They have families. Yep. You know, they have like different priorities in life. They're not just making funny, dumb Minecraft videos anymore. So there it is. Part of it, and, and this is to be expected, is people get old. Like a guy like me who makes videos in his 40s, I'm a what's called a man child. Uh, sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. I wish I turned out differently. But a lot of people, they grow old, they have kids etc. But here it is. There's some more to this. Like, here it is. When you're a kid, let's look, let's move forward to this one. He makes a very good point. When you are a kid, the majority, if you ask a kid these days, the majority of kids want to be a YouTuber. They don't want to be an astronaut. They don't want to be a fireman. They don't want to be a police officer. They want to be a YouTuber. Here he is dis uh, discussing that. And then we'll go from there. Because a lot of kids, actually, I, I think, in fact, Listen. the majority of kids, there, True. there was a study done, and the majority of kids, when asked what job they want to be whenever they grow up, they say YouTuber, YouTuber. You know, like a content creator, a streamer. They don't say, you know, like police officer, actress, singer. They don't say anything like that. They say YouTuber, right? Right, and this is true. You, They ran a big study the other day asking kids they want to be YouTubers. And sometimes, it, it's while it's hard to make it as a YouTuber and – I've only partially made it as YouTuber, if I'm being honest. Um, it's a lot of work. It's difficult. And let him, let's him let see him discuss that in my next heartbeat moment. YouTuber is very, very, very difficult. And I promise this is all going to tie back in as to why, you know, a lot of us are, um, you know, stepping back and then retiring. But you see, a lot of people think that being Here a YouTuber go. is just kind of like playing games all day, you know? So there's another part. When, you just, when you're when you young and you want to be a YouTuber, 
we often think, hey, you know, I just want to play video games all day. And then you start doing YouTube and you realize there's so much more to it. There's thumbnail making, there's video editing, there's motion graphics, there's, you know, making sure you've got the right computer specs and you've got the right equipment and setting it all up. And when you're a small YouTuber, when you're starting out, you don't have a team, you don't have like the tech guy and the graphic guy and the motion graphic guy. You're the guy, that's it, you're the whole crew. So when you think about what a small YouTuber, especially a small YouTuber that wants to grow into a big YouTuber has to go through, very important to keep in mind that it is very difficult and there's way more work than you originally expected. Let's go forward and check out another really cool uh, moment here that I liked. Here's a candid day in the life of a YouTuber. He goes over what it takes, basically going to hit on what I just said there, but in his own words. Let's listen to what he has to say. Up until three years ago, I was doing everything myself, recording videos, editing yep. videos, everything, making thumbnails. Everything was done by myself. And my schedule was insane. Like I was literally hurting myself uh, mentally, yep. uh, probably physically too, just because of the schedule that I had, you know? Back in 2017, 2018, I would literally wake up at like 9 a.m., yep. stream for a few hours in the morning, record and edit a new video immediately after, eat lunch somewhere in there, and then after finishing a video, I would stream again for another couple hours. So if you listen to what he just had to say there, well, you wake up, you start streaming or whatever type of, you know, whatever you do. If you're a YouTube video maker or if you're a comedy maker, you start writing and then you sketch it up. You, you, you call your friends and you meet up and then you go film it and you do your first take and then you see what's good in the can and then you go back and you refilm second takes and then you edit it or you do a rough edit and then you edit some special, like it just, there's so much work to it. And for those of you that are wanting to get into YouTube, uh, maybe even want to make it into your career, it's the best career, don't get me wrong. But there's so much there that you maybe uh, you just maybe more than you originally expect. So keep that in the back of your head. I'm gonna skip forward here uh, to talk about uh, his lifestyle. Here he goes into what his day uh, consists of a little more in depth. So I'll just skip forward to 7:49 and listen to this. Five hours sleep. It was not healthy, and I five hours sleep. One day I was I was about to go to bed, and I just couldn't do it anymore. You know, I, I broke down. I was crying. I was upset. It was just like I couldn't physically do it anymore because i mean listen to and now he's going to talk about the grind i mean that's the thing about youtube right about about the grind you have to constantly be on the treadmill because it, the, the moment you step off the treadmill yeah. the youtube algorithm the audience however you want to phrase it right you're at risk of being forgotten you're at risk of losing your relevance you're at risk of fading away right so listen to that so even once you make it and, and you're watching this, you may make it. I mean, you, you got to stay busy. You got to stay on the grind. And I mean, that's just something that, you know, a lot of people just don't expect. So it's good to hear it from someone like him who has made it, makes tons of money. And he is not quitting, by the way, which is great. Creecraft apparently is still going. But it's nice to hear from other people um, uh, what they've gone through. So there you go. Those are the moments that I've selected. Of course, you can go to h.ki and watch them all yourself. You can skip through them as you see fit, the ones that make sense. Click on them, the ones that don't, don't. Ago, I'm just going to go back to Heartbeat here. And then I'm going to go over here on the left side. I'm going to go to My Heartbeat. And now I'm going to show you the second video that really resonated with me. Uh, and this one is here by Rick Beto. There's fewer moments, so it's not going to last this long. But his is unique insofar as he has a theory as to why people quit and don't quit and why he doesn't want to quit despite having lots of views and having a very you know frenetic hectic life so let's click on his stuff here again i'm in my videos okay so i'm make gonna go through it here i'm gonna start off at the beginning he talks about tom scott and matt pat big user big youtubers pardon me leaving youtube let's click on that over the past few weeks a bunch of big youtubers tom scott and matt pat in particular are quitting youtube tom scott those are big names, and he's going to use those as basically some of the references. So when he talks about things, he's going to try and keep that in the mind that these are some of the uh, the YouTubers that he's uh, got in mind when he gives his suggestions. So watch this. Now we're going to skip forward to 225, and he's going to talk about the stress and the process, uh, stuff that was covered by Creekcraft there as well. So let's just go ahead and click on this one. Process of what it's like and the stress that's involved with making YouTube videos. Now, 
I don't feel the stress because I make videos on things I'm interested in. Right there. So that is the big takeaway I got. He makes videos about things he's interested in. He's not making videos because he's got a schedule and people have told him to and his boss wants him to make it or he's making it on a topic that he knows might get a lot of searches but doesn't really appeal to him. He's doing it for him. And obviously he, he's a little older. He's probably got he's probably got a fair bit of money and he probably had a fair bit of money going into YouTube. So he may not have had to go through that initial grind that, you know, the starving student might have to. But very important, at least at some point, you want to start making videos that you want to make. And that was the takeaway from that one. Let's go forward a little bit here. And he's going to talk about why most people quit. This is another very important takeaway or a very important heartbeat moment. Let's go. That most of the people that make these videos have really specific upload schedules. Right on the nose. So listen to that and, and that's definitely worth writing down. If you have a solid upload schedule that you can't break from, then it feels like a grind. You're basically locking yourself into a job. And while that might work at the beginning, eventually you're going to burn out from that. I can tell you that because I have to make five of these videos a week for George at Freedom and it feels like a grind. Sorry, George, just kidding. Eh, sort of. <laughs> but jokes aside, he, he, he's, he's right on the point there and he goes on to elaborate it here. Watch this. It follows my channel knows I put videos out whenever. Whenever they're done, I put them out. If they're done at 9.45 in the morning, yes. I put it out. If they're done at 6 o'clock at night, I put it out. When I do live streams, I do live streams on Thursdays, on Fridays, on Sundays, on Saturdays, sometimes at night. You hear that? So at least at this point in his career, and let's say maybe he, you start off in the grind and you're doing it, you know, like, like a soldier, you're up and you're doing your thing and you go to bed and you go, you repeat the next day. Eventually, at some point, you can relax your schedule and just do it when you want to do it. Upload it when you want to upload it. Don't worry about all those YouTubers and all those big YouTubers telling you you got to upload at 6 a, 6.04 a.m. on a Thursday because that's the best time of the year or the month or the week to upload. And if you don't do that, you don't know what you're doing. Forget all that stuff. His advice resonates. Let's keep going. Never becomes a job. A jo so it never becomes a job. I might have missed the uh, start of that heartbeat by a split second, but don't let it become a job. Or if it is a job right now for you, Take your foot off the pedal and go back to doing it while you love to do it. Think about that Jerry Maguire type uh, scene where you, you're not doing this for the money, are you? It's not just the money. No, do it because you love it. So there you go. Don't let it become a job. And then here, let's see what he says about finding new topics and how does he personally keep going? How do you keep doing this? How do you find new topics? And I said, I, I just think about things that I'm interested in. Whatever comes to mind, I'm walking around, and I was like, ooh, that'd be something to make a good topic on or anything I want to explore. There you go. That's his that's his ideation process. Uh, granted, it may not have been what he started with at the beginning. He was, you know, big into music and top top music songs of the 70s and top rock songs. Like he had it structured, but now it's less structured and it's more what he wants to do. Maybe it's maybe he's gotten to the finish line or he's made it, so to speak. When you make it, you make it. And then once you make it, you can start doing 100% what you want to do. And that's what's happened. And remember, the topic of this discussion is why people quit YouTube, why all these big YouTubes are quitting. And you know what? If you got a good thing, you don't always want to quit it. If it's a thing and you're making money at it and you've lost the passion and the interest in it, maybe this is one way to get it back. Let's go a little bit further. The last little bit I want to talk about are the comments, the views, and how that stresses people out and his advice as to how to deal with them comments because that's another thing that people stress out about they get they put themselves they have self-imposed pressure on on releasing videos at certain times then they look at the comments they look at the views and they get incredibly stressed by that and i always say if somebody writes a negative comment it's there we about go. them if somebody writes a positive comment it's about them there you go so the last thing comments stress a lot of people out and especially when you're starting out and you get like one comment on your video that comment means a lot, right? Like somebody took the time to watch your video. What did they have to say? Now, constructive comments, constructive comments are one thing, but we all get the negatives, the trolls. Guys, just ignore them. You know what? Just like he said, if they write something like that and they take the time out of their day to, to, to take you on or say something awful about you, it reflects more on them than it does you. So 
try to keep that in the back of your head. I know it's not easy, and especially in today's social media world where likes and views and engagement and all this stuff is what kids talk about instead of, you know, other things like they used to 20 years ago. Try to keep that in perspective. Consider Rick Beto's advice. Consider uh, Creek Craft's advice. Consider this all. Keep going on YouTube. Don't turn it into a job. Don't quit if you don't want to. Let's do this. Thanks for watching.